Are we already doing our third tutorial video? <laughs> well, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to teach you how to elevate your killer gameplay to get you out of those yellow ranks and hopefully into the greens and purples or higher. First off, this is going to teach you strategies that work with every killer. While every killer has some nuance, their own abilities, etc., there are fundamentals to be learned here. So let's get it started. Tip number one, three generator situations. It's no secret that as killer, you need to patrol generators when a match starts. I mean, survivors are bound to be near them, you know, repairing them, but there could be certain generators that you'll want to focus on more than others. It is imperative that early on you create a sort of perimeter around three or four of the seven generators that are fairly close together, or at least isolate what generators are furthest from the rest, because you're trying to herd the survivors close together as the trial goes on, and eventually push them into what is called a three generator situation. A three generator situation means that you can move between and pressure all of the three final remaining generators with ease, forcing survivors to be exactly where you want them. This will take practice to learn how to do, and of course there are certain survivors who will make your life difficult, but this tip can turn the late game around for the killer entirely. Tip number two, survivor spawns. This one is simple and easy, but as you play more of the game, you'll start to get a feel for where survivors spawn on the map. Generally speaking, they will always spawn a decent distance away from you, so immediately patrolling your nearest generators could be a waste of precious early game seconds. Tie this tip with your late game three generator strategy and you'll be able to apply pressure and push survivors where you want them to go early on. Tip number three, knowing when to strike. Again, this tip comes with a bit of timing that can only be gained by playing, but too many killers attempt to attack only to miss, be pallet stunned, or hit the window instead of their target. If need be, be a little patient or don't swing at all. Being stunned or hitting a window can give up so much time in a chase that could have ended sooner. Respecting a pallet and letting it drop early is much faster than taking a stun. Sometimes ignoring the pallet and not even immediately breaking it could be the play. Learn to hone in your timing for when to swing and what the distance between you and the survivor looks like. And also, don't forget to hold your attack button so you can lunge. Tip number four, identifying loops. Killers are faster than survivors at their base speed. So the way survivors waste your time is with loops and mind games. Now there are two types of loops to look out for in my mind. LT loops named after structure shapes, and these could be lengthy and riddled with mind games. and pallet loops, which can be long or short with fewer mind games. Both of these require the killer commit to action and pressure the survivor. Waffling on what direction to go for too long will leave the survivor team with so much extra free time. You can also look for loop size. Pallet loops are sometimes so small that killers have a huge advantage and it's a quick win. Predicting what a survivor will do could end a chase early, saving you so much time and distracting the survivor team. Tip number five, identifying survivors. Watch how a survivor plays as you chase them. When struck, do they flail or spin in a random circle unsure of where to go, or do they have an immediate escape plan and are looping you well immediately? While being looped may make you want to hunt that survivor down even more, there is likely a weak link on every team. Investing too much time in chasing someone who can outplay you is allowing them to give their team plenty of space. This doesn't mean give up on every single chase after 30 seconds, but to identify their weakness and strengths the minute you encounter them. If they're early dropping pallets and sprinting away, this could be a sign of being skittish. So don't break the pallet, go around and continue your chase, apply more pressure. If they're trying to lead you to a generatorless area on the map, Maybe don't indulge too hard because they're trying to lead you away and are incredibly confident. If they're waiting at pallets to stun you, respect the pallet and step back. Work on thinking about what they're capable of and what they might do next, and this will help you make smarter decisions during chases. Tip number six, choose your hooks. So you downed that annoying Meg. Do you place her on the closest hook to you so you can continue chasing her friends? Or do you place her where there aren't any generators to pull people away from what they're doing on the other side of the map? Perhaps you carry her to where the loops are weak or where there are no more available pallets and hook her there. Where you hook your survivor is important. 
because getting each other off the hook and healing means they're not repairing generators, and it allows you to herd them, again, where you want. Now, I'm not saying face camp or even zone camp. Don't be that guy. You'll get outplayed most of the time anyway. But I am saying, think strategically. Placing the survivor right on a hook next to a nearly done generator just means they can get unhooked and rush the generator without batting an eye. Unless several of their allies are nearby and you immediately can indulge in chases or additional downs. Think about the situation when picking up and hooking a survivor, and sometimes hooking the survivor isn't the right play at all. Tip number seven, prey on altruism. Survivors will inevitably go for unhooks. And while I'm not advocating for face camping or tunneling, as said before, you do know at least one survivor is going to move to unhook somebody. Knowing this gives you power to apply pressure and wound or hook even more survivors. It is honorable to move to the other side of the map to let survivors get off the hook and heal, but moving too far so that they can completely slip away is foolish. Capitalize on altruism. If you can down a survivor and immediately chase another, sometimes this isn't a bad call. Knowing that smart survivors will try to rescue their downed teammate may give you an advantage and flush hidden survivors out for you to also chase down. Tip number eight, expectations. Stop expecting to kill everybody as the killer. You're gonna get outplayed, finessed, and dunked on sometimes. Go in with minimal expectations regarding winning or losing, and go in with the hope of learning or enjoying the match. Too many toxic people in post-game chat say flashlights and looping are toxic behaviors. They're not, you're just salty, you got outplayed. Play to enjoy the game. You're not dumb if you don't kill everybody. You have more to learn. And that is the beauty in playing video games. It could make you a better killer to just try to learn in the moment instead of raging. Now, tip number nine, hide your line of sight. Now, this tip could be considered a more advanced tip, but survivors depend on your red line of sight to know when you're rounding a corner. So sometimes simply moonwalking around a corner can give you the advantage to get that extra hit and down them. Instead of just walking forward around a corner, hide your vision radius by turning a bit or turning around completely while still walking and maintaining the same direction. It could be what ends chases early to your benefit. And that's it guys, those are our nine intermediate killer tips for Dead by Daylight. If you like this video, be sure to let us know down below. I can't wait to do more videos like this for you guys in the future. Of course, check out these analysis videos of viewers from our channel. And of course, I'll pray to the entity to see you in the next video.